the revelation of the Holy Spirit and the false revelation. Galatians chapter 1 verse 11 through 12 states, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. Many people say they received a revelation or a vision, but we should examine whether those visions are all the truth. In the Old Testament, visions often appear through dreams. Daniel interpreted the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar and Joseph interpreted the Egyptian pharaoh's dreams. However, are visions in dreams still accurate now? Isaiah chapter 29 verse 8 states, As when a hungry person dreams of eating but awakens hungry still, as when a thirsty person dreams of drinking but awakens faint and thirsty still, so will it be with the hordes of all the nations that fight against Mount Zion. As it is written, when you wake up from a dream, it disappears. Then, what is a revelation or a vision like in today's era? Galatians chapter 1 verse 1 states, Paul, an apostle, sent not from men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Paul did not become an apostle along with Jesus' 12 disciples. Instead, he was an apostle sent by God the Father. He was an apostle created by God. And it is when he became an apostle created by God that he earned the right to say, Grace and peace be with you. An apostle is a righteous teacher. He is one who leads us to the right spiritual path so that we can learn God's word and follow the Bible so that we earn grace and peace. Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 through 5 states, Who gave himself for our sins to rescue us from the present evil age according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And as it is written, Jesus followed the will of God and bore the cross for us. Galatians chapter 1 verse 6 states, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. The one who called us to live in the grace of Christ is the Apostle Paul, and we should follow the one who called us to the grace of Christ. So how can we leave that truth and follow a different gospel? Believing in what is different from the word preached by the Apostle Paul and in a Jesus differently from how it is written in the Bible is a faith that is entirely unnecessary. If we look at Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it states that salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Even in light of those who follow a different gospel are those who cannot distinguish between the revelation and visions of the Holy Spirit with those of Satan. Galatians chapter 1 verse 7 states, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. Those who emerge saying they are the second Jesus return, those who say they are the fig tree, those who say they are the queen of the south, these are those who pervert the gospel of Christ. They comprise of Antichrist. John chapter 1 verse 1 states that the word was God. So how can they abandon the word of God to believe in the word of humans? How can they possibly attain salvation doing that? Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 states, But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. It says that anyone who preaches a gospel other than the Bible will be cursed. Today, churches who preach gospels different from the true gospel led you to the wrong path in terms of your spiritual lives. Now we must turn away from any gospel that is different from the gospel of the Bible, Jesus' gospel. Galatians chapter 1 verse 9 states, As we have already said, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted, let them be under God's curse. Since it states that anyone who preaches a gospel other than the Bible will be cursed, we must believe in only the Bible and not go away from what is recorded in the Bible. Galatians chapter 1 verse 10 states, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. All of you are of God and must become those who win the approval of God. Galatians chapter 1 verse 11 through 12 states, I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel I preached is not of human origin. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. What the Apostle Paul is preaching is not something received from mankind or learned from people. Rather, he received it 
by revelation from Jesus Christ who informed him and allowed him to comprehend it. That is the gospel he preaches. Galatians chapter 1 verse 13 through 17 states, For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart from my mother's womb and called me by His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me so that I might preach Him among the Gentiles, my immediate response was not to consult any human being. I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went into Arabia. Later, I returned to Damascus. These words are the spiritual confession of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, who back then only had physical eyes, was a foolish man who persecuted those who believed in Jesus. But then Paul met Jesus on the road to Damascus and Jesus spoke to him and his eyes were open and became the Apostle of Jesus. This is not referring to Paul's physical eyes, but to his spiritual eyes. From the moment Paul's spiritual eyes were open, he became a witness to Christ. Paul, who once persecuted those who believed in Jesus, now became someone who believed in Jesus. He became someone who taught those who believed in Jesus and became a teacher to those who would believe in Jesus. These are revelations. If one receives the revelation of Jesus, even if one does not learn the Bible outright, one will come to know. Believe that receiving revelations is when you are not able to perceive the meaning of what is recorded, and then once you receive revelations, you are able to know. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3 through 4 states, That is the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. In reading this, then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ. I hope all of you here today who are listening have hearts that can believe that this place that tells you about these secrets and revelations is truly a place where God resides. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 5 states, which was not made known to people in other generations and is, has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. The sons of men cannot understand the Bible, believe that we can only understand if we are sons of God. To know these secrets is the truth that all of you here today are God's sons. Jesus came as the firstborn and in Romans chapter 8 verse 19, it says that all of creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. To the sons of Ben, the secrets of the end of the age are not revealed to them by God. These secrets are only revealed to the sons of God. God did not allow the sons of men to understand the secrets of the end of the age, those revelations. God only allowed God's sons to understand these secrets. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6 states, This mystery is that through the gospel the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and shares together in the promise in Christ Jesus. We initially thought that only the Israelites, those who had been circumcised, were considered God's people. But the Apostle Paul preached the gospel to Gentiles, and he said that in Christ Jesus they would all become his heirs. During the time of Jesus, we would all be considered Gentiles. We did not even know of the existence of Jesus or Christianity. We did not know what kind of person Jesus was. However, we are in Jesus and we become his heirs. Heirs are those who will receive the will and purpose. Believe that it is when we also become heirs that we can receive the promise that Jesus received and be a part of when that promise is fulfilled. We can also receive the same blessings as Jesus. Romans chapter 8 verse 17 states, Now if we are children, we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. God said that these are his children, and those who insist that they are slaves cannot partake as his heirs, as they do not have the right. When Jesus, the firstborn son, is rewarded generously, we can also be rewarded generously. Believe that in order to receive the same glory with Jesus, we must also receive the same suffering. Galatians chapter 4 verse 18 through 19 states, It is fine to be zealous, provided the purpose is good, and to be so always, not just when I am with you, my dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth 
until Christ is formed in you. We must become like Christ's image. That is how we can become God's children. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8 states, Although I am less than the least of all the Lord's people, this grace was given to me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ. We can see how much the Apostle Paul lowered himself. I hope we can all think like the Apostle Paul. I hope that we can also believe ourselves to be the least of all the Lord's people and to know that grace was given to us in order for us to preach to those who do not know the Lord. To those of you who have received revelations from the Spirit, remember to remain small and humble and not to become arrogant. I hope you can become someone like Paul. We are the ones who have received this secret of the word, the most important word in the world, word that is filled with immeasurable grace. This was given to us so that we may also preach the gospel to Gentiles too. I pray in Jesus' name that we may also preach the gospel to Gentiles and receive the revelations of the Spirit and be blessed.